Ah, what a lovely afternoon. I'm really glad I haven't developed a horrible, debilitating disease which just ruins my ability to work, wipes out my savings, and makes life pretty frustrating, pretty depressing. Fortunately, if I was unlucky enough to get one of those really bad diseases or to get hit by a bus or one of those uh, very infrequent events, such as becoming a victim of crime in Japan, uh, at least we do have social insurance schemes, health insurance schemes, which pool risk. Pool risk pooling of risk works really well when there are big downside events that are hugely costly to the individuals or to a company, but actually quite infrequent. So we know that young people, for example, have very little chance of developing a bad disease. Uh, of course, the single largest cause, uh, cause of death for young people is death by misadventure in the English expression. So unless you do something absolutely crazy, the chance of something really bad happening to you is actually quite small. But for a small minority of people who do suffer serious health issues or are very unfortunate to be involved in an accident, for example, or a victim of crime, the impacts can be devastating. So if we all collectively come together to share that risk where everyone makes a relatively small contribution through an insurance premium or through paying tax, then that means that we're covered in the event of a event that brings a really bad downside and the cost to us of having that protection, that insurance, are relatively low. Now, of course, whenever there's insurance, it raises these issues of moral hazard and adverse selection we've spoken about elsewhere. The really important thing is that um, pooling risk doesn't work very well when you have high frequency events uh, because simply the average cost of the event is going to be borne by a large number of people, so the insurance itself would be quite expensive. So we really want to see insurance in no circumstances when it is a low probability but a high downside event. When you're actually a customer of insurance products, it's important to keep this in mind. There's a lot of really bad insurance products in the market because companies are trying to make money. Just ask yourself, even if this thing happened to me, how costly would it actually be? And is it worth paying the insurance for this? I'll give you one hint. Um, I tend to, when I'm buying travel insurance, use the custom option. And I almost never buy the insurance to cover my personal possessions. Once upon, I, once upon a time I did, when I used to travel with thousands of dollars worth of camera equipment. But first of all, I'm a little more cautious these days. Secondly, I travel with uh, less equipment. And thirdly, the equipment is actually rather cheaper than it used to be. On the other hand, some astonishing proportion of people make claims on travel insurance for the loss of their possessions. So insurance companies have to charge quite a premium to cover that risk. On the other hand, if you're customizing your travel insurance, you can add a life insurance premium for a million dollars, for example, Ichioku en, for only 40 or 50 yen uh, for a week's travel. That's because the chance of you actually dying traveling is extraordinarily low and the insurance companies know that so they will sell you that insurance at a very low price. On the other hand the chance of an 18 year old or a 19 year old crashing their brand new car or usually their second hand car or their dad's car or their mum's car is actually relatively high. That's why we have very high insurance premiums for people under 21 or under 25. So do look carefully when you buy insurance products and think about whether it fits that basic definition of an effective insurance policy. Large downside risk and relatively small cost of insuring for that risk. And a final observation on this, before I ever went overseas for the first time as a university student, as an 18 year old university student, I went into a travel agent and I remember they had a very big sign that said, if you can't afford the insurance, you can't afford to travel. Actually, rich people can afford to not be insured, but poorer people really do need the insurance. And that actually raises some equity issues that is a conversation for another time and another place.